United States, the court is now in session. The New York Times has published classified and sensitive information from the Pentagon Papers. This should completely not be allowed, and they should be banned from posting any more classified documents in their publications. The public has the right to know about all proceedings the United States troops are going through in the Vietnam War. The truth must be exposed! Well, in this case, exposing the truth <laughs> it violates Section 793 of the Espionage Act. We're publishing any classified documents that could result in injury to the United States is illegal. Espionage? It's not like someone snuck into the Pentagon building in the dead of night and copied all of the Pentagon papers and sent it over to us for publication. That's exactly what happened. Um, do I need to mention the Watergate scandal, the future Watergate scandal? Um, I have no knowledge of the Watergate scandal at all. Mm. Back to the case. Publishing the Pentagon Papers did not cause direct damage to the U.S. forces. Therefore, the NY Times did not violate the Espionage Act. Yo, the New York Times can't just publish whatever they want. Some prior restraint has to be practiced here. Uh, actually we can, as long as our articles do not pose a threat to the United States government aren't obscene, or don't threaten the safety of the United States, they can and will be published. Freedom of the press is one of the pivotal things that must be protected in, to ensure the democracy of the United States. Nixon's attempt to stop the NY Times from publishing the Pentagon Papers is direct violation of NY Times' right to exercise the First Amendment. The First Amendment grants freedom of the press. The publishing of those papers would not result in the inevitable, direct, and immediate event imperiling the safety of American forces, and thus further restraint was not required. The Supreme Court rules in favor of the NY Times by a vote of six to three. This court is adjourned. The New York Times versus United States is a case of civil liberties as it protects the personal freedoms. Uh, this case is important as it expanded the freedom of press and free speech, making it much harder for the government to abridge upon those freedoms. The government has to have very strong evidence that sensitive publications would be an immediate and direct threat to the U.S. forces in order to exercise prior restraint on the release of information by the press. If such evidence cannot be provided, then the press has the freedom to publish an extremely wide range of issues. The larger range of freedom provided by the First Amendment has been used as a precedent for several other cases.
versus Hayes. The court is now in session. Your Honor, I do admit that I worked with marijuana users to publish my article, but I only did so for press and reporting purposes. It is my duty as a member of the press to give factual and relevant information out to the public. The marijuana users only complied with me if I refused to reveal their identities, so I agreed in the name of the press. Okay, but no one's blaming you for doing the actual report, but, but you are a citizen of the United States which means you are not immune from a subpoena from the grand jury. Plus, by refusing to testify, you are putting the citizens of the United States in grave danger. What if the marijuana users continue to manufacture and use marijuana? What if they convince others to manufacture and use marijuana? See, that is where you're wrong. I am not just a normal citizen. I am an officer of the press, and I am granted specific privileges. <laughs> press clause states that any reporter can publish materials without fear of public punishment from the government, even if it's sensitive to the government. Your Honor, please, the Constitution states that Congress cannot make any laws make abridging the freedom of the press. Okay, we have heard enough. The other justices and I will discuss the matter. Court has ruled 5-4 against the existence of repertorial privilege in the press clause of the First Amendment. Reporter Brandsburg, you are asking the court to grant newsmen and newswoman. Yes, and newswoman. You are asking the court to grant newsmen and newswoman a testimonial privilege that other citizens do not enjoy. This we decline to do. The decision will not undermine, however, the ability of the press to gather and report news. From the beginning of the country, the press has operated without constitutional protection for press informants, and the press has flourished. However, I am not overlooking the importance of free press. Citing Gibson v. Florida, I am establishing a test for deciding whether a reporter can be compelled to testify before a grand jury. For such a subpoena to have merit, the government must convincingly show a substantial relation between the information sought and the subject of overriding and compelling state interest. Bransburg v. Hayes was monumental in deciding the extent of the freedom of the press. Yeah, so if the government can show a substantial relation between the information the reporter yields and um, the court case, which is enough compelling state interest, the reporter must testify that information. Right. Bransburg versus Hayes define exactly how much freedom a member of the press um, has by saying they are not above normal citizens in being required to testify, but have a little flexibility if the confidential information would not directly help the court. Both cases help to secure freedoms for press corporations and the members of it. This is where extremely important in the reporting world. New York Times versus the United States brought in the horizons of the content that publication companies could publish without fear of retribution from the government, as the First Amendment protects this right of theirs. Then, in Brandsburg versus Hayes, the case defined the protections that reporters have when producing sources from sources who wish to remain anonymous. Though these protections are very limited in court, it did provide an opportunity for reporters to not have to reveal those sources if the reason is applicable enough. Through these two landmark cases, the publication companies have a greater scope of freedom of the press and of free speech, and can report important information to the public without terrible restraint being forced upon them.